All right, so thank you guys for coming out. Uh, 2.30 on a Monday, this is awesome. I was thinking there was going to be like two people. I was going to be uh, surprised if there was two people. Yeah, yeah. So, so let me uh, guess, all of your planes are really late, and you just got no place better to be Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> Dealer room's full. Um, all right, so CISA, um, we're going to go through you know, and talk about a couple different aspects, a couple different perspectives. Uh, EFF has published their perspective and opinions uh, pretty clearly, and uh, we can uh, go over those as well. Um, so uh, let's, let's kind of get a, a feel for the room. Um, who in here is, is like, feels like they're you know, law experts and they're here to really dive into the, 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 um, the, the language of the law and how it, uh, impl you know, how it affects, uh, no, no, no hands there. We got one lawyer in the room. Uh, so he will be lying um, <laughs> and I'll be making stuff up. So, um, so basically, in, in essence, um, you know, the um, uh, CISA Act is, it was meant to be a, a, a way of clearing the roadblocks to be able to allow private and public, uh, the, the government and private companies to share uh, indicators of compromise and other types of security uh, and, uh, data to, you know, help every, everybody out. You know, it's like if, if, you know, we have open source tools out there that collects data from a lot of different sources. We have particular security vendors that pull all of their data together. And it's like, what if we could just, you know, be one big happy family and say America and, and, and be able to have all of that data together. Uh, so that's, that's the, the pipe dream. Um, and uh, of course, the reality has been a little bit more nuanced. It's uh, you know, I've read, you know, what's in the data, uh, you know, who's going to control the data, who's going to have access to that data, um, and um, and there was also a thought of, of when we talk about clearing roadblocks was also giving uh, some liability protection, uh, and and we can talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, so so basically, out of the CISA, you know, um, that was basically tacked on, stapled to the back of a, a funding bill, you know, and got through a lot of Obama's technical uh, uh, bills have, uh, have have happened like that. I remember the HIPAA uh, bill that actually gave HIPAA some funding and some teeth to actually go and, and uh, start uh, cracking down uh, was, was one of those that got, you know, stapled on. So, um, um, so what we have is, is basically yeah, you know, privacy issues of, of uh, what data and, and where is it and, and, and where to go is um, the you know, practical use of you know, actually sharing data with the government. And then um, the, the internet doesn't have borders. So I, I'd also like to talk about a little bit about uh, the um, uh, implication of the EU. And you know, America has a very different idea of privacy than the EU, and uh, and they've got a lot of very strict laws about it. So we can uh, touch on that. Um, DJ, well, let me just throw in a little bit on the language of the statute itself, um, just so we can have a little bit of a floor for the for the discussion today. One of the one of the first things that's most intriguing about the bill is that the bill set out a structure to create another bill, essentially. It, 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 it set out language that said, here's what we want. We want companies to be able to share. We want data to be able to be shared, but privacy to be protected. And we want, um, you know, we, we want some protections against liability for people for sharing this data. And somebody will figure that out later. The, the bill expressly calls for them to make rules and guidelines that would be posted within six months of the of the bill. And those were, and those have been up, and I, I've reviewed those. Those were actually better than I thought they'd be. Um, but I think there's still ways to go. And, and unfortunately, that's the, the, the nature of a bill like this is you're dealing with guys like me writing bills, right? I'm an English major. I don't know crap about, I, I, I barely know how to make my laptop work. And half the time I don't, and I call my IT guy. Okay, I'm the guy then who's writing laws about how we're going to share technology data and cyber threats and what quantifies as a cyber threat. You know, those are all guys like me who have no idea. They're politicians, they're lawyers, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're non-tech people who are trying to create these bills. So that's part of the, the, the interesting element of the bill that was passed, is the bill that was passed is really a a framework on which to hang later guidelines which will hopefully then allow for the for the actual sharing of data as intended 
The other thing that, uh, that, that I wanted to discuss about the language of the bill that I think we need to cover a little bit here today is the questions of privacy. What, what can be monitored, what should be monitored, what is being monitored, and what is being shared or, or isn't being shared. So those are all things I think we should sort of cover today as we're going through this bill. Is anybody in the room, um, you know, in the roles in their companies, considered sharing data with the government through CISA? Is there anybody in here that, that would be in that role? Because uh, it's been, you know, a couple months. This was passed in December of last year. Uh, so, you know, uh, you know, and I was trying to find, uh, you know, uh, doing a lot of research to try to find if anybody's actually, you know, shared data uh, and, and experiences and, and, you know, using uh, that avenue and, and how hard is it? Uh, so, so it, at this point, you know, the practicalities of the law is is still out for question, right? You know, it's like uh, as we were talking at before uh, the panel, it, it, this might be a you know nobody uses it. You know, it's just we, we talk a lot about the you know, privacy implications and get scared and, and get fussy and and uh, EU goes and passes uh, even more draconian pa uh, you know laws to to deal with us us crazy Americans and and then you know we, we don't end up using it. Um, I see scenarios like um, uh, think about PCI. So when you get, you know you got PCI and you go and you screw up uh, and and you uh, you know get a PCI violation, one of the options they can you know do is put you at the the most stringent range of a PCI, which you have to get uh, you know reviews uh, once a year. You have to you know give something you know once a month, and I mean there's just a lot of like you know they can just basically uh, kind of. Uh, put you in the hot seat for uh, for until you can you know uh, you're on like probation uh, what what if the situation were to occur like you know take target for example and if the CISA law was around then so you know this was a big deal affected a lot of Americans um, you know not that they can require but they sure can kind of make it uh, uh, known that you know target will share their data um, moving forward as uh, as part of being you know security fuck ups and and uh, you you know now you're going to uh, uh, be part of this program because it's uh, it's for the greater good um, I see that happening um, um, but that uh, yeah I'd love to hear y'all's uh, perspective on what you think that uh, the the actual uh, implica you know the, the the realities of actually you know sharing with with the government See, here's my thought on that. Now, I gave a uh, I gave a talk on this right about the time that the uh, the guidelines were printed, uh, February or March of this year, and uh, it, it, at that time, you know, we had just seen the guidelines, so I was a little more insight of what was going on. But my my speech had primarily been prepared in advance, and my thought was that there wasn't there wasn't going to be any use of this at all. We were all we were all having a big hissy fit over over a bill that passed and was going to be immediately forgotten because the truth is there's no obligation to share right there's an opportunity to share there's a method to share there's an allowance of sharing data but there's not a requirement to do so and I think that unless it's a really really big significant cyber threat in which case multiple companies are already going to know about it probably be sharing information on on something of that size or you know somebody gets caught with their pants down and and says oh well but we're going to share all this information to protect others in you know a show of good publicity i think most of these cyber threats are going to be something that's attacking some vulnerability in in a company's own system or own and they're not going to want to share that they're not going to say this is how someone's attacking me and by the way this is the weakness in my system that they're attacking so i don't know that a lot of people are going to be sharing this information with the government or with or with a competitor company um because you know if the competitor company gets hit too well okay so i i'm not sure that this is something that's really going to get a ton of use and frankly you know, here we are in September, and I did the same research that Xavier did. I haven't seen any data on anyone actually using this this system. That could be that they're not publishing data, but I can't find anything that says it's being used at all. So we got two questions here. Uh, do we have the cube? Is that around? 
So got a little microphone cube, and uh, we're recording all the trend, uh, the the sessions. So that's why we want to use the use the microphone. Turn it on. Turn it on. That's on here. Question. Uh, the first one was this uh, yeah, right. gentleman in the front. So I come from the insurance industry, and one of the biggest issues that we're finding right now is uh, cyber liability, data breaches, mm -hmm. network piercing, things like that. Uh, so I'm not exactly familiar with this law, but one of the things I heard earlier was you know, ways to protect yourself from liability by utilizing this law. Could you give a little more information about that? Because that could be relevant to what I do in the future in my industry. Uh, you want to take that? Yeah, I mean, it basically says that uh, you know, by sharing the data, you are kind of, you know, you have limited, uh, it's going to who you're sharing it with, but if you do it by the guidelines, the regulations, that you basically have no uh, or little liability for sharing that data. So basically if, 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 you know, something bad happens because the data, uh, you know, happened, you know, uh, whatever, there's no ramification. So basically they're trying to, you know, put the speed bumps, you know, lower the speed bumps down to say, it's okay, please share. Uh, if you do, you know, nobody can sue you because you shared uh, right. is, 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 is that type of liability coverage. Yeah, it's to encourage the sharing, but it's also, it, it protects it. So when you do share data, you know, one of the things this act says that you're supposed to take reasonable steps to remove any non-necessary personal data. Now, that's a whole lot of language that means probably we're not going to do anything uh, and we're just going to share all the personal data. But e even presuming that you do, you know, try to redact certain things, some personal data slides through or some personal data is... A necessary component of the cybersecurity attack that that you're sharing the information on. So if I give out your your name or your social security number or your health records or things that would normally be something that would pr be prohibited from sharing, this would reduce the liability or eliminate the liability on you sharing those things so long as you followed all of the guidelines in the act and the and the suggestions of how to follow it. Um, it doesn't remove any liability from the cyber attack itself if you would have any um, you know so whether you share or don't share doesn't impact any liability you may have it's just that if you do share and you do it properly I can't sue you for engaging in that sharing yeah hi, 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 privacy HIPAA violations things like that you, do you, have to you, you need the cube as we're recording do you have to uh, um, when you do it properly, do you have to include certain language that says we will share under only certain circumstances and and our private here's our privacy policy and things like that? Um, I, is that part of that? You know, when you say well, it's not part of uh, due diligence, where do you have to? How often do you have to warn somebody that you will be sharing data? You know. I mean, the act provides for that allowance of sharing data. It 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 is not um, it, it it exists, right? It is now it is now the law of the land. So there is no requirement that I tell you that the law exists any more than I tell you that cops might arrest you for speeding if you speed. You know, I, I don't have to get a letter every six months that reminds me that I shouldn't speed. So, to the extent that you have a privacy policy or you run a, a, a website or, or some kind of web-based entity and and you have terms of service or a EULA or something else that states a specific privacy policy, it's probably good good business sense to go ahead and add something into that privacy policy that says, to the extent allowed or required by law, we will share data to prevent cybersecurity threats under the, you know, Cybersecurity Act. But you don't need to. I mean, it's, it, it, it's there. It's there for the exact purpose of, of sharing data, and, and that's, that's what, that's what the law provides for so yeah so uh, just looking over the the section uh in the law about the limited liability uh section 106 <coughs> um basically in in that um you know it, it does refer to you know in accordance with the guidelines and and that i don't have available but um, you know, in the case which a cyber threat indicator or defensive measure is shared with the federal government, cyber uh, the cyber threat indicator or defensive measure is shared in a manner that is consistent with other sections of the bill, and uh, and the sharing or receipt as it may be, um, you know, and, and, it, and it kind of goes through those. And so it's it's basically to say, 
that you know by by participating and sharing in this manner, uh, you're not going to be you know sp you know on the hook for that liability uh, of of that data itself, um, and so um, just gives protections along those lines. Right. Yeah, my question is about if uh, the person does have some of their data effectively put out, and since they can't sue the company, what kind of recourse do they have to recoup from the loss? That's that's the privacy concerns, R right? right? And and so uh, there was no, um, you know, EFF was trying really hard, you know, not necessarily kill the bill, uh, but that there was, you know, pr fix the privacy provisions. Um, there was a, a proposed amendment that failed that um, was supposed to, you know, put in those uh, privacy restrictions, um, and that was it. Department of Homeland Security was going to be the main, like, arbitrator right. of that, and ensured that all data was cleansed of personal information. Um, but that that amendment failed, um, and so uh, so that that that's why you know kind of up in arms and when it passed is that it passed without those additional privacy protections um, and uh, so that yeah anybody can sh if you share through this act um, you're not liable for you know that information you know uh, in, 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 its, in itself and to be clear it's not quite that black and white I mean we don't get me wrong we both we both have these concerns as do many other uh, privacy groups uh, the the act, though, does not say feel free to share personal information willy-nilly. The act speaks to, and the guidelines very specifically require, a company sharing data to expunge any non-necessary personal data. Um, the problem is, as far as I read that, is that there's two sort of caveats to the expunging data requirement, which is one, if it's part of the cyber threat, um, and how you know you determine that I guess is going to be expressly case by case, fact based kind of scenario, but but it also doesn't really provide a lot of um, guidance on on you know, what happens if you don't. I mean, you're, yeah, you, you could potentially find yourself outside the limitations on liability and liable for sharing data, um, but did you take reasonable care? Did you have a way to know that data was there? Do you have to go through and, and, and review all of what you're sharing, or am I sharing, you know, data sets that may contain elements of data that I didn't review? Uh, it, it all has, it, it, there's, there's still a lot of ways that I can foresee data getting out. But at least in a technical sense, we are not supposed to be sharing that personal data. I, I think that it's potentially there and, and that's a risk but the, the act does at least try to limit that risk to some extent yep oh, oh sorry I was yeah yeah I like to speak loudly no no there's somebody with yeah, the, we've got the microphone right behind you yeah we got other people <laughs> um, I had um, I had a question about you were saying about uh, about people sharing with the government what about the other way and also probably like a follow-up uh, people not using this is because they're afraid of all the uh, crap like with HIPAA you know it seems like it seems like it seems like people don't want to share medical records and and stuff anymore because of, because oh HIPAA 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 you know sometimes it's just stuff you need but all but you know anyway what about government sharing with you know companies about you know sure. data they so collect? Sure. So there used to be um, the, there used to be some you know, programs where you know that would happen, um, and it was uh, it was you know a pain to get into. Um, you you had to have you know according to the size of the company and the involvement uh, number of, of your staff you know going through that would have security clearances um, and then uh, you could get approved to be on uh, so the FBI was InfraGuard had programs uh, uh, um, CS, uh, uh, CIA had had similar programs um, and now uh, with DoD um, and uh, Department of Homeland Security kind of wants to be that that arbitrator between you know all the like army cyber air force cyber and whatnot and so the, like i said those programs have existed uh in some part with the fbi and cia that i know of now it it, it, it kind of clears out the some of the 
pay the red tape to be able to participate in those programs. Um, th is it a game changer from the value of the data they get? Sometimes it's really according on you know your company, your threat model. You know that what what's your company protecting itself against? Because uh, you know you're not necessarily you know if you're running a printing shop, uh, you know, in, in in your local community, you're not going to have the same threat actors as the FBI and the CIA. Um, and so uh, it's um, uh, so the data is there. Um, I did want to take a quick caveat to, or, or take, um, step aside to kind of talk about what we talk about in, in, in indicator of compromise and the kind of data that is being shared. Uh, you know, if while there is there's definitions in here, um, they really don't really exclude much. Uh, and uh, so, so the possibility of sharing, you know, things like medical records, sure. But you know what. Uh, what we're really looking at is, is um, where are the bad where are the bad guys? Where what can I do uh, to know uh, you know which IPs on the web are good and versus bad? Right? We know of the infrastructure in which uh, many of the um, state-run actors work off of. Um, you know, they have hack servers that we, you know, and, and that we were able to track those to an extent and be able to say, you know, if, if you're communicating to these known IPs, that we already know that that's already bad. Um, and so there is was about three years ago it cropped up every, you know all these new companies about look I've got um, you know inf indicators of compromise you know data that I can you know sell you and so all these companies came up and kind of build up research labs to be able to kind of start sh you know, selling and sharing this information um, as, as an intellectual property uh, and and so the idea here is to kind of um, you know, not have a huge firewall in, up between you know uh, public agencies and to be able to get to that data. Yep. Um, so I'm a total neophyte here and just want to be sure that I'm clear. Um, it sounds like with CISA, um, it does quite a bit to protect or keep them from being liable uh, organizations and corporations that are sharing this data, but does very little to protect the individual who is Absolutely that data. Absolutely correct. Yep. Yeah, 100% 100 100 correct. To. Yep. Yeah. So well, uh, you know, what the, the, the government answer, to play devil's advocate for a minute, uh, would be that we're protecting the individual by keeping your data safe from the cyber threat that's, that's you know, attacking the company and keeping other companies' data secure. But in the grand scheme of things, um, you know, obviously we're not supposed to be sharing your information with the bad guys. We're supposed to be sharing it with the other, the other companies and with the government to keep the data more secure. But yeah, in the end of the day, if that involves transfer of your personal data, then it does. Get Mike up to the next person that's been waiting. You good? Okay, I got. It. Yeah, and then you're next. So, I haven't read the 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 technical details that you kept referencing to, but I'm, I'm kind of trying to visualize what kind of data we're talking about because. Uh, is this just like a, a proposing a constant feed of logs or is this actually like a, a completed incident report with all of the details that describe the incident? Uh, it, it, both. I mean, it is, 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 uh, is, is what we're looking at is that, um, you know, when, when a team, you know, discovers uh, a, a particular threat actor and its methods, you know, being able to completely finish that research and know all the aspects before they share, uh, you know, is, is, is fairly common. And so being able to then, you know, release those details, uh, you know, and, and especially, you know, state run actors that would be, uh, you know, if you're a private company and you discover this stuff, you know, a lot of people will, will publish for, for, you know, uh, publicity and, and, and try to get, gain credibility for the company. Um, but that if it is, you know, it's an active threat that, you know, is, is threatening the, you know, security grid or something like that, you probably would want to go talk to the government first, right? And then being able to then share the data that you used in that research to be able to know all of that uh, about that particular threat actor. Uh, now there's, you know, a, a, a way that you don't have to, you know, sign away, uh, you know, the entire company's you know, ability to uh, share data. It, you know, you've got this avenue of being able to just, uh, you know, share that that specific set of data. 
on the other side, the other thing is that you know flow of, of real time data, uh, real time logs, um, and and uh, because uh, you know hacked systems are very you know fluid and change uh, you know quite often throughout the day, and so those type of intelligence feeds, um, there's both private uh, and public feeds that are available, um, and so uh, you know being able to use you know both of those kind of help um, you know uh, raise the uh, value of that data um, to be able to minimize false positives and to know that you know uh, when you get that kind of known command and control connection that you can uh, you've re got something real and you can uh, respond appropriately I, I guess I, um, the, the amount of live feed that a large company produces is enormous like well, terabytes right so and terabytes of just garbage and and, and, and well and, so and if you're using some, you're using a managed security company for example like uh, right. Dell SecureWorks right they've got all that data together and and while you know it well you know they've you know, divided up to you know from a technical perspective that they can then look at the bigger picture and be able to provide you know a concise feed to its customers saying you know of all the bajillion comp you know, uh, endpoints that we manage you know here's our threat data here's where we know that you know but where bad things are happening uh you know particular uh vulnerabilities or, or exploits that are, are happening right now you know they have a, a, a good enough footprint uh and that's the same with you know uh, internet or um, ibm and and other you know large managed uh, security shops and so the idea is that uh right now there's a commercial set of that data and then there's the government set of that data and and CISA was kind of put in place to kind of help merge that data um, and um, so we can all be better uh, prepared and, and defensible against attacks. That's, that's, that's the idea, the, the, the good side of what CISA is supposed to do, um, um, but that, you know, like I said, it's, it, it, the devil's in the details there, but that, that's yeah, exactly. That's what I was about to say. So they, they have actually specified, uh, like, formats and types of data that they want no. and, and how it's packaged? Nope. Uh, okay. No, I mean, not, not in, the, in the realm of, of uh, like I said, uh, a CISA bill. It, it's, um, like I said, there was, there's previous programs that, you know, are, uh, that st exist, but, you know, whether or not, uh, you know, how easier they are to use now that CISA is around, you know, still, uh, still unknown. Have, See, they, the, have the they funded an organization to do those details? They've established a organization to set out the guidelines for which to follow, and then the 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 data goes to. Uh, is is, is it, it is DHS? It is it is DHS. Yeah. yeah. So, right. But the the bill provides for sharing of cybersecurity threat indicators, and it defines that term in the bill as basically anything you think is potentially showing a problem. So I mean, it can be everything as detailed as your your already refined security logs that show to the to the nuance every detail of that attack, or it can be, hey, we think there's a problem. We're going to dump everything on you, um, and, and that actually speaks to one of the things that I think is <laughs> probably one of our greatest protections to privacy in this bill. Is the only thing I see happening. And hey, bear in mind, I'm a bit of a cynic, and I'm not in the tech world, and I have no control. But the way the way I read this bill, I only see one of two things happening. Either one, nobody uses it at all, which is my first thought. Or two, people start using it, and then everybody thinks, oh well, we want to be on the bandwagon. We don't want to be the company who didn't share data. We don't want to be the company who gets, you know, caught in the in the bad PR of we get a cyber attack and our customers are now vulnerable or have been injured in some way. Uh, and we're the ones who didn't share data. So everyone's going to start sharing every bit of data that comes in, and it's going to be so much noise that everything just gets lost. So either, either there's going to be zero data or so much data that it's useless. And, and, and unfortunately, it's designed to be the middle ground, but I just don't know that companies are going to play that way. There's, there's not a lot of incentive to do that. Yeah, uh, uh, suppose you go back five years and you read your uh, uh, terms of service if you're an individual. And uh, uh, for companies, uh, it's your service level agreement and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they tell you that, well, yes, we're going to encrypt it to a certain level or something like that. 
Um, but they also say that we will provide a key to the government if we're given a, uh, a court order. And then we we're talking five, eight years ago or something like that, because these things, these phrases have been in SLAs and and others. Y you know. Usually, don't, they don't get that precise. They'll say in accordance with l local U.S. and government law. You know, well, and so they, that kind of gives. I, a, that's I think uh, you know it depends on who you're. Yeah. The, the terms of service. You just actually have to read it. But years ago, if they did, if they were saying things like that, because if they were using the word Patriot Act or or if we think that you're doing something <laughs> evil. Uh, a lot of the social media people, you know, are have these types of things in there. Um, they were worried about getting sued. So my question is, does this um, close any loopholes for uh, terms of service and service level agreements and things like that? Well, well, to the extent that it gives that limitation of liability on such transfer. I mean, if, if the reason that I'm saying I'm going to keep your data private is because I think you're going to sue me if, if, if I don't, but I now have an avenue to share information, whatever that information may be, whether it includes your data or not, with a limitation on liability, as long as I do it properly, then yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to concern myself with what my, with what my terms of service say or what my, what my users might sue me for, because that's, <laughs> exactly what this law allows for is to is to allow me to share cyber cyber threat data without worry of liability yeah and and again you know terms of service uh, it's it's really interesting to see wh which you know different uh, phrases and words have actually gone and been tested in court. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we can talk all about you know the crazy crap that they throw in there, but you know, it's a, you know, if you use our software, I can go into your house and eat in a, you know peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I mean, you can't just you know you put crazy stuff in and think that it's just you know law. It's like you know I'm a, I put up a sign in my in my office and therefore it's you know I can do it. Um, and so. Um, you know, as a U.S. company, you still have to follow U.S. laws, and there are U.S. laws for you know a legal intercept. If you're you know telecommunications, there's uh, you know a subpoena power, and and um, um, and there are those type of things you don't have to put in your privacy policy or your your SLA, because everybody in, in the nation has to do these type of things. And so um, you know I've, I just writ, wrote my policy private uh, privacy policy for my company. Uh, you know, a couple months ago, and you know, it, it went through, and I made sure that you know, look at all the guidance and and what I what's required by law and what's not, and and uh, in general, I, you know, if if the U.S. government comes and and requests data, uh, you know, it's it, it you know, we, I either say I either say yes or no, and if I say no, I you know, I'm gonna, I get a lawyer up and 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 figure out why I, I can I can legally say no, and that's completely. Not connected to a terms of service or uh, S or any of the EULAs. In terms of service, you got to remember it's just a contract. It's a contract between me and my user, and at the end of the day, we can contract to a lot of things, um, but I can't contract to not comply with a court-ordered subpoena for you. Right. Uh, I can't comply. I can't contract to avoid, um, you know sharing information that's subject to search and seizure or some other so to, to to the extent that that we have a contract that contract can still be trumped by 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 other law I think we have another so this limits liability with corporations sharing with the government <laughs> what about corporations sharing with corporations so yes. so actually so both you actually get more lim uh, limited uh, you get complete liability coverage between company and company ironically okay so is there a way we can like kind of turn this around on them like uh so i get an email from dropbox saying my you should reset your password everything's fine <coughs> don't worry <laughs> uh, and if i wanted to you know get the real technical details on that they'd tell me to go pound sand and if i sued them for those technical details they'd probably say we can't privacy now with 
this indemnifying them on those privacy concerns can i now sue them and there's, say there's, hey you 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 need to give me the details so that i know exactly what happened and you can't say privacy because now there's this law in essence no um that you know that now l lawyers can get creative <laughs> uh, you know, and you can sue for anything and 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 make your legal case and 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 uh and and argue arguments and so uh you know you can always do that uh my opinion is is that you know this is a uh um base the 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 liability um restrictions here is just basically a protection mechanism to uh, to enable companies to do this it is not something that can be enforced um there's no um you know uh, uh, a way of, of making a company you know do this anything under CISA right I mean that, that's the thing I I'm pretty creative and I still wouldn't take that case because the truth is that like I said at the beginning this allows but it does not require so there is no one required to share data and you wouldn't be able to force them to share data that could be shared under this act the government can't force them to share data that could be shared under this act they have to decide to share data and if they do they're okay so that that's the limitation on liability um, it's it's not anything that, that, that definitely allows for um, forcing someone to share information that might be related to cybersecurity. Okay, another question? Okay, um, interesting discussion a little bit about the terms of service. I uh, did want to point out, uh, Shankar Vedantam at uh, NPR's Hidden Brain did a study a couple weeks ago and found that like the vast majority of people agreed to hand over their firstborn child and uh, mm -hmm. share their life's history yeah. with the NSA. Uh, in the terms of service, so I question the how useful those terms of service are. But um, to hire me and let's see if we get the firstborn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the, the truth is that you know there's a lot of stupid stuff in there, um, but it is a contract. It is something that you could try to enforce. Uh, whether a court would actually uphold that, or but but in in general, most things in terms of services, no matter how sort of one-sided or 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 draconian they may be, are absolutely enforceable. So that's why. Every Dragon Con, I'm sitting here saying, why do you keep clicking your stupid I accept button without reading what you... Because if you actually read that stuff, we'd never use any product. We'd be sitting there <laughs> chiseling crap on rocks, and the, the chisel would probably have terms of service we wouldn't want to agree to. So it, it's, it's, you know, at the, at the end of the day, we, we give up a lot of privacy. We give up a lot of, uh, of, of personal right because we want to use the cool toy. And, and um, yeah, enforceability comes down to it. Like, has that language been tested in a court of law? Um, you know, what what provisions uh, would the uh, you know the company have to uh, to be able to, uh, or what provisions would the you know defendant um, have and to be able to say that uh, this contract is uh, you know invalid for um, for various other reasons. Yeah, and so speaking of uh, never using a product, TJ, you make the point earlier about how uh, companies, like, uh, rightfully so, would be reluctant to um, share information under this act. And um, due, due to the sheer sensitivity of the information we're talking about, um, if it's in the federal space, it automatically becomes controlled, unclassified. If it's a certain infrastructure, it's secret or top secret. So to that end, um, is there anything in the law that uh, talks about maybe some key performance indicators? And we talk about uh, you know doing things for the greater good. Hey, uh, you know in the public health space, if we vaccinate people, you know we can look and say, hey, we we eradicated polio. Um, is there anything in the law that that is talking about um, how we're going to measure the performance of this, uh, or is it all kind of a black box at this point? No, I mean they give a definition of there's there's the two terms that they use is called cyber threat indicators, and uh, and the other one is defensive measures. Um, and so there, there's some, some broad definitions around that, uh, and, and, but that's just to put a name on what we're sharing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so that they can just reference something uh, as they go through this, and this is this thing that we're, we're talking about, and, and, you know, when you do the, you know, share this thing, you know, and, and this thing, and so they just put a name on it. Um, the, uh, this, is, this is a, you know, this is a, a, a legal, uh, you know, instrument, uh, not uh, gu not guidance and how to best use it. Uh, 
Right. Uh, and so, you know, that's where <coughs> we looked at other, you know, uh, NIST and, 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 and CIA does some publications and of, of, you know, kind of best practices and whatnot. And, and so, again, there's that, uh, you know, public-private availability. Uh, but the idea is now is that, um, you know, uh, we should have, um, you know, the ability, of course, Nobody is going to, you know, expect that we're going to get, uh, you know, ARPA uh, net or you know, secret net IPs in a, you know, you know feed that they're going to share outwards, right? Um, but that, uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, after, you know, Army goes and, and squashes this particular attack, they can let us know, you know, how, uh, you know, how they did it, and here's the file hashes. Uh, here are the you know the methods in which they did it. Um, you know now that you know people can can uh, share those you know, particular you know, um, details with with uh, you know this this level of protection. You know, and the, the, the truth is that there's the, the the act provides for the ability to do it. Not any meaningful idea of how it should, how much it takes to be successful, right? Because I mean, the, the government doesn't care. If you send out hundreds of thousands of cyber cyber threat indicators or defense me, me, uh, defensive uh, man, it's Monday at two thirty. Sorry, defensive measures. Defensive yeah, measures. Yeah. Uh, defensive measures. Hundreds of thousands of those are shared by companies every day, and nothing actually gets prevented. It may not be that useful a bill, right? One thing gets shared in the 10 years the bill has before it sunsets, but it's one really big thing that stops one really major cyber attack. This has been the most successful bill ever. So the government doesn't really have any meaningful analysis of what is or isn't a successful bill. They put this in place so it can work. The policy, you know, uh, the policy is the same one that we had when after 2001 we all realized, oh, the FBI and the NSA and the CIA can't share data with each other, and if they had, we might have known some different things. So maybe we should let them talk to each other. Well, it's that same policy now. We have private companies who are taking these threats and the ones being, you know, be, being attacked, and they're taking defensive measures, and these defensive measures are working. Wouldn't it be great if they could tell their, their other businesses what defensive measures work against these attacks? Wouldn't it be great if they could tell the government what attacks were happening? So it's more of a policy that it's a good idea to share this kind of threat information amongst various entities so that it can be all congregated and acted upon rather than any kind of, we need to have... 16 points of data shared, shared a day or it's not really going to be effective. Question? Yes, uh, so the question I have is, so nobody's really, you have not found anybody that actually uh, started working on uh, joining this uh, you know, agreement and trying to share information. Have you heard of companies saying that they're going to or and if they're willing to? Okay, then that's where the next question was, were they, were they willing to do it before it became public that they got hacked? And so even though nobody's planning on doing it, any information that is shared, is that also available via FOIA request or is that protected under FOIA? Um, so so the, it, I was nodding in case for the folks in the back. Yeah, I mean, that that's the, re that's the research. I came up with was nil, and, uh, and nobody's mentioning using uh, this as an avenue of, of sharing. Um, I did just was going across my notes here, and and remembered that they, there's a reporting period of every two years, um, and that the for the oversight uh, of of this bill is that there will be you know reports sent through Congress on the use of that. So you know I'll I'll, I'll set my calendar, and you know we'll do a FOIA request uh, and and find out. Um, you know the usage of this in, in, in another year and a half, but um, you know in the meantime, um, owners there is. Uh, I think I remember reading a section on, on ownership of data. Well, the data the the the, the company still owns the data, but the other the, other <coughs> the whether whether it's being used and who may be filing and what filings are done, and certainly the congressional report would all be available by FOIA request. Right. I don't know that the data itself would be because that would seem to defeat the idea of the bill. I mean, in other words, we're, we're basically telling, <laughs> if I'm the bad guy, I'm going to file a FOIA request, and I'm going to see what you found out about me and, and, and how you're defending it, and I'm going to go the other way. So I, I think that would be the type of data that would be redacted from any type of FOIA request. But the actual, 
usage and, and, and information, I'm sure would be available by FOIA. Well, right. I mean, right. Yeah, FOIA is, 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 yeah. is for the government. I think if companies share the, 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 the act, again, this is something that's a practical question, but just kind of see how it plays out. But I, I think the act assumes that if you're sharing company to company, there's going to be a report of that sharing as well. If you do it, you know, via the, you know, via the CISA Protection Act is, is, is where you, you're going to be, you know, basically, uh, if you're filing that information with, you know, the, the, uh, DHS and 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 that if, that if, if it's set up under under CISA, and so that's that's the uh, that's the data that would be in those reports. I mean, but it's it's really there's there's not a lot of re current restrictions on why s companies can't share data. Uh, right. You know, I I do that all the time. I, that's and there's a there's a capital market for that. There's companies that sell it, and and so uh, there's th that happens and and. Really, uh, you know, I, I, I would assume that the only reason that they would go through CISA is if they aren't new or had a, a high risk of sharing particular data, um, but that was in the company's best interest, uh, public opinion involved, right, that they want to be able to share this data uh, and, uh, you know, with this other company or, or something along those lines. Some other situation where they need to share the data because of a non-technical reason, uh, but that's very risky, and so therefore they're going to do it via CISA to get the li liability protection. Here's, here's something that, that I just want to add. I don't want to... I don't want to run out of time without talking, at least addressing this issue, because here's one of my biggest concerns about the Cybersecurity Act as it stands. We're talking so far only about the actual sharing of the information, right? Once I've determined there's a cybersecurity threat and I've determined that I'm going to share certain information about that threat with the government or others, this is the process and this is what we're talking about and this is where our concerns of privacy and all that are, are coming in. But we're missing, I think, one of the biggest, biggest problems privacy related issues that arises out of this bill which is the monitoring provisions the cybersecurity act seems to at least in potential greatly broaden the ability to monitor information going across your network the 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 cybersecurity act allows a company to monitor any information that may lead to discovery of a cybersecurity threat or to hire someone to do that monitoring for them. And I don't think it's too big a stretch of the imagination to say, well, the best way to catch all cybersecurity threats is to monitor all data and to track all transactions. Now, you know, I'm a business. I'm going to be conducting business. I don't have time to hire employees to sit there and listen to your data or read all your emails or look at all your web traffic or any other things. But I certainly can think of a security company that might want to do that, especially given the nature of how much that information might then be able to be used to create defensive measures or, or other things that are sold for quite a lot of profit. So my biggest concern with this bill is that it seems to wipe away all the limitations that used to exist on actually monitoring networks, right? Back when old Ma Bell was the one monitoring your usage, it was, well, I get to pick up the call at the very beginning, and I get to listen for a very short time, and I get to see if I can identify the person by their voice or because they say, hi, this is Bob Smith, or whatever, and try to identify the threat from that, and then I have to hang up because I can't listen to the call, and I can't share the call with the government. This bill doesn't seem to have any of those limitations. Again, other than the, the, the fact that we should excise unnecessary privacy information. Um, I don't see any limitation on me hiring a security firm to monitor every single bit of information that passes through my network. And that's my biggest concern with the bill. And, and, and that you know, information that is fed into the government Will it be part of the uh, um, intelligence infrastructure? Mm -hmm. That's the other. You know, is this a, a extension of uh, the, the intelligence community's ability to collect data? It was not intended in, in its form to write that, but that there isn't uh, protections uh, in place. 
Um, the oversight is written in as a kind of a standard uh, uh, oversight. There's nothing that really jumps out as like this is different from other bills and we're going to have amazing oversight and I'm just I'm not going to worry about it because they're going to tell us all the stuff that they do. Uh, it'll be a standard kind of congressional oversight and then which EFF and you know will be doing the FOIA request and making sure that they're actually following you know uh, and, and not uh, just using it as as a you know a backdoor for the, uh, another you know legal framework for the CIA just to do whatever they want. Uh, where are we at with the box? Yep. Yeah. So um, I have a question about uh, the the legal ownership of this data at the different stages where it's shared between two private entities between a private entity and the government. Um, what are the mandates as far as when it becomes part of you know public domain? When is it still private data? Like what? what options do companies have and what are they forced into doing like how does that change i don't have the bill in front of me xavier does so yeah i'm, I'm, I'm saying if I, I can i don't think I, I don't recall off the top of my head any language in there that creates a scenario where the data becomes public domain again the idea that i can can share doesn't mean i have to share the data is still my data and and to some extent Again, my my thought, this is not coded in the bill, but my thought would be that it becomes less useful the more it gets publicly shared, right? Sharing it amongst a company who can create the same defensive measure, sharing it amongst the government who can investigate the threat makes the threat less viable. Sharing it broadly, publicly, and widely means the threat now knows what we know and is going to take a different avenue. So I, I don't think at any point the, the act, in, I, I don't recall anything in the act that anticipates this data being shared with the general public or becoming public domain. It, it, it only allows for the sharing of data amongst people who could use that data to defend themselves. So do you see anything different than no. I do on that? Nope. I mean, nope. You know, again, I. I'm one guy who read the act, <laughs> and I don't, yeah. I don't have it in front of me, so yeah, I don't know how it's going to ever. Yeah, be you know, and, uh, private to private, there's, there's, you're, you're going to have a, a clause in there that says, you know, here's uh, who retains ownership uh, of that, you know, especially when it comes to managed security services and things like that, uh, on, on who owns uh, and that data and who can, and, and not only you know can do stuff with that data, but then you know also has. Um, uh, the liability of that data and and the and the who you know is responsible for securing it for other type of laws uh, and so uh, uh, those have been pretty well nailed out since uh, you know we've been doing this for a couple of years now you mentioned earlier that the before this bill the data used to almost be like sold as a premium towards other companies yeah still is yeah mm -hmm. okay but uh after this bill, when you share data with another company, are they al then allowed to share that data as they will, or is it based on the first company who had the data? So, uh, so again, uh, so there, if you're going to be share from a you know private contract that we're just going to go into a contract between two entities, that contract, the, the answer to your question will be laid out in that contract, right? Okay. Uh, is the uh, ownership and, and rights of, of that data, and whoever owns that data, you know, uh, d you know, can they you know share it with somebody else? Um, the uh, um, if they go through the the CISA provisions to to entitle that the, there's no provisions in here that change you know the uh, who owns stuff and what so there's still going to be that clause of intellectual property rights of who right. own who owns uh, uh, and has rights over that data. Um, one thing that's interesting is when you talk about ownership of data and you're talking about public data and, pr and the privacy laws. And we were talking about earlier with EULAs, but specifically with uh, privacy uh, policies that that you know, require to be published on, on websites and whatnot. You you know you basically have to tell the public if you're collecting information from them and what you're going to do with that data. And if this you know if I change change my mind about that and I want to do more or something different with that data, you know how am I going to let you know? That's in essence what the uh, there's the privacy uh, laws require you to those published uh, privacy policies on websites um, and so uh, so when dealing with public data uh, that's not covered by HIPAA or PCI or something like that uh, there that's that's the general laws uh, you know basically you have to you have to, to duly inform your your um, 
uh, customers and people that are just even you know, going to your website on uh, data collection and, and use of that, uh, therefore. So, um, two different things. I just wanted to kind of, you know, uh, uh, talking about ownership of, you know, or uh, using the data and, and whatever method you want, and you know, how much freedom do you have to then use it again? Um, you know, it's it's uh, if you're collecting it directly from, you know, uh, end user or a uh, you know um, person on your website. You hit the privacy law. Uh, if you're, you know, already own the data, um, and you've got provisions in your privacy policy for then selling or sharing that information through a third party, then you can do that. If your privacy policy says that you know we will not share or sell our privacy data to anyone, then you've got to change that before then you can use it. Right. So it's it's, it's that's that's the kind of a chain of, of legal requirements around privacy policy and then being able to work between two companies. Now, in terms of the, I, I think I understood your question a little differently too. I let me make sure I, but I, I uh, in, in terms of the question about whether under CISA, Target gets hacked and can share the information with Walmart, CISA doesn't really anticipate that Target's only going to call up Walmart. CISA anticipates that Target's going to then put that cyber threat indicator or or, or defensive measure or whatever they're using to to compete against that threat sort of into the pipeline and it's not going to go to Walmart it's going to go to so it's not a question of whether Target tells Walmart and then Walmart can tell uh, Sears right. right it's it's Target's going to tell people okay. and it's going to go into the pipeline and the CISA pipeline and then shares out to there's a there's there's a way to get the information that's being shared as a company and get your you you have access to what's coming in and, and what's going out. So it, it's it's not a it's not a person to person transfer under CISA, at least not anticipated to be. That's what I was curious about because like there are some companies I could see not wanting to share the protection or the preventive measures with every company because they're competing companies, but if it was selective and then if that company could then continue the share of information or not. Yeah, and again, you know, what we're talking about here is is you know um, Here's here's how you detect the threat, and, and the technical you know uh, file hashes, IPs, things like that. And not only how do you you know pr uh, you know detect them, then how do you defend against them? So that's that's what we're, you know where it's like the two different you know uh, uh, terminologies here. And so um, we're not saying here's how we fix it. You know we bought this particular product, we put it in and installed it like this, and and this helped mitigate that you know threat. Uh, and and you know. And Get you know nobody wants to share you know the security you know how we fix you know how we build our internal security you don't want to put make that public right but to say that uh, to defend against this particular threat if you you know uh, restrict this particular register key that malware can't be installed you know that type of you know uh, defensive measure is 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 the kind of you, you boil it down to that, that you know those those are the those are the like KPIs or the or the, the particular technical data that we're we're looking at sharing. Just to geek out. <coughs> and this is uh, going to be a last question here. It looks like at 3.30, so. Well, I'm really glad the geek got to it. <laughs> uh, the, uh, do you have an, a, an executive summary of technical advances and big data analytics that would address Mr. Minhull's uh, monitoring concerns. In other words, you need the technical ability to use the monitor data. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just curious if you've been paying attention to, you know, state of the art in in big data analysis. That's all. Uh, yes, uh, I mean, there's there's some really great stuff. I mean, um, uh, around around that, I worked in you know the SIM industry, uh, uh, you know, security information and event management for about ten years, um, and uh, and then watch that evolve into, you know, it's just stuff in a database to, you know, actually useful stuff and that, you know, you can respond to it. Um, and uh, being able to then uh, do deeper analytics on, you know, finding uh, finding the, the needle in the haystack. Um, um, I, I'm not sure, if, you know, wh well, where you where it relates to this. Like have a, you know, a timeline of big data analytics that apply, would apply to privacy you know, uh, if you keep track of that every year, so you just simply 
January all these advances were made, February these advances were made, March these advances were made. I mean, it's, it's, a, con it's, it's a constant you know, flow. <laughs> uh, w from vendor world, uh, from me, you know, saying uh, from all the security vendors and what we're, what we're up to, uh, it's usually two times a year around RSA and around Black Hat. You know, because they want to get as much public uh, public notice out of it as possible. So uh, no, RSA conference in San Francisco is usually right on Valentine's Day. Uh, I haven't mentioned to my wife that I'll be missing Valentine's Day yet. <laughs> so hey, babe, I'll be missing Valentine's for RSA. So uh, and and. <laughs> so, but that's 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 generally where you know product. You know, the security vendors will release new stuff. But as for research and the way things are, people are doing stuff, uh, you know, that either comes out as, as a flow if they're just publicly putting it out or, you know, there are security conferences going on all the time where you just find new ways of doing stuff. So. Well, I appreciate it. I mean, and, and, you know, we made it to 3.30. Nobody fell asleep, <laughs> I don't think. I don't know, you know, they uh, haven't checked in the back I yet. I saw some clothes. Uh, and so uh, I, I really appreciate it. If you have any more questions, you know, come on up and, and uh, we can answer a few more. But, but we really want to clear out this room. I think Scott's ready to, to, yeah. to go Scott's home. Scott's done. Yeah. <laughs> so.